Hey everyone, welcome back to Homegrown Passion here in the high tunnel today. Just brought my tank in. I was looking at my strawberries and I think I'm going to be able to winterize these guys. I took a look at them. They're not frozen and if I don't do this today and tomorrow, I think I'm going to lose them, but I think we have a good chance to keep them going. So stay tuned and see what we do. So here is my plan. I've talked to quite a few people online to see what we can do and you can see the plants here are doing well. The crowns are doing really good here. You can see down in there. So what I'd like to do is winterize these because I've always read and always heard that two-year-old crowns produce so much more than first year. And I'd really like to get my production way up if I can. So I'm going to take these buckets off of here. Oh, look, at this a gross strawberry. Take the buckets off of here, dump them into the tank, pull the plants out of the growing medium here, trim them all back, and then rinse them. Put them in the cooler for a few days to cool them down, and then put them in the freezer, just like the wholesale nurseries do. And hopefully it works. Theoretically, this should work. You know, getting these plants out of here and into the uh, cooler and then to the freezer to get them dormant. But it's amazing. I planted three plants in each one of these. I did one just to see how it works and I was able to get seven plants off of there because the runners, I thought I got most of the runners off, they all took root. Look at, isn't that cool? Look at all the roots down there. Messy job here, but that's okay. It's nice and warm here in the green, in the high tunnel, I should say. So I'm going to go ahead and get the tops cut off to find the individual plants and then pull them out of the dirt here, or the growing medium. I emptied one beto bucket already. And if you remember, I had three main plants in the bucket and I was able to get seven plants because some of the rudders did take root. And look how nice these guys look. Look how pretty the roots are. Nice size. And the two-year-old ones, look how big those crowns are. A little bit of cleanup to do on here, but it shouldn't take too long. So what I'm going to do is take all the top foliage and cut it off and then separate the plant out of the growing medium. These guys have nice roots on them. And look at all those roots in there. So I'm going to take the plant into the head house and rinse off the roots to get a lot of the growing medium off of them because I do not want to keep pulling at it and hurt the roots at all because, you know, you can't have a plant without roots. And look how big that is. Wow. So this past summer, I did have some aphid problems in here. You can see some remnants of them here on the underside of the leaves where they like to live. Also had some two-spotted spider mites in here. So when the plants are rinsed inside of the head house, I have a, another bin. I'm going to dip them into a light hydrogen peroxide solution to kill any eggs or anything that's left over in here. So next year, I don't have an infestation. This past summer, I thought I was really good at keeping the runners off to keep the plants nice and happy. Well, it looks like I didn't. Look at all the ones that crossed over between the buckets. These are all different runners, and i got to cut them before I can get the buckets apart. That's a good thing I don't mind getting dirty, because this is kind of fun. It's cold and misty outside and pretty nice in here. As you can see, I just have a uh, vest and my long sleeve shirt on. It's interesting to see all the different plants growing in these beto buckets. I have the older plants here, growing right over here. And then this, I think, was a runner. I'll pull him out here in a second. And it's just kind of cool to see how big the roots are and the older plants. Here, let me show you an example over here. The older plants, look at all the hair roots on them. Look how big that is. Look how big that crown is. It's really cool. Here's another one. It's a little bit cleaned up more. And then, let me see if I can find... Um, no, it doesn't, oh, yeah, nope. Here's one. This was a, a, a runner that took off. You can tell it's just a one-year-old plant. These guys are going to be really nice for next year's production. So over here, I have a bunch of runners that rooted. And I'm just using my thumb and fingers to separate them. And this is what usually looks like what I get this size plant. So I'll cut these leaves off of here. There, here's another one over on this side of the bucket. A couple of them. Boy, I'm so surprised at how many of the runners rooted. I'm just kind of shake that off. Clippers, clip them off. Oh, yucky strawberry. Boy, if I got plants this size when I order them, I'd be so happy. 
So I started off cutting all the green off first, then I tried the other way, but I think it's working better cutting all the green off first before I try to separate the plants. Here's the big guy. I'm so surprised how green these plants still are. It got down below zero outside and in the high tunnel here it was that cold in here also and I'm so surprised these plants didn't freeze and get brittle that they are so nice and green. Unbelievable. Oh. Just got done trimming this beta bucket of the strawberry plants and I wanted to show you the three original plants that were in here. This one, that one, and this one. And look at all the runners that rooted. I have so many more plants. As you can see, we have quite a few betel buckets here in the high tunnel full of strawberries. There's 200 of them in here. And what we're going to do with the other part of the strawberry plants is we're going to trim them all up, throw all the debris on the ground because it's just a little bit easier. Then we're going to rake everything up, get it all cleaned up, take the buckets off the rail and put them into a nice little pile and cover them with straw to overwinter them. The reason why we want to keep the plants in the beto buckets like this is that it's not going to disturb all the roots and they'll have a faster start. But keeping them in the buckets and keeping them covered with the straw inside the high tunnel here is I'm going to have to drop down the sides here to make sure the temperature doesn't fluctuate too much because you know in the winter time when the sun comes out it gets to be like 90 degrees in here and then at night it gets 10 degrees so I don't want that big fluctuation. I want the plants to feel like they're outside in their normal environment and they stay happy and go dormant because if they don't go dormant they won't come back to produce for me. Well, I'm going to take these plants that we already got out of the beto buckets and take them over to the, the head house, dip them in some hydrogen peroxide solution and get them ready for storage. So I'm in the head house here with the strawberries I pulled out of the beto buckets there in the high tunnel. It's easier to work here, a little bit warmer <laughs> to work in here. And I'm using buckets because I don't want to get the dirt down in my sink. So I have a hydrogen peroxide solution here I'm going to dip them into. And a lot of people use vinegar, but vinegar I think will change the pH of the plant too much. I think I'm going to stick with the hydrogen peroxide to kill anything that's on these plants so I can get them ready for storage. So I'm just kind of dip them in there. And then get a little bit off of there. And putting them in a bin here with some towels so they can dry off and then get ready for storage into the freezer. And I'm making sure I'm getting the whole plant in there, the top, the bottom, everything. Okay. Well, I'll keep going and I'll put them on the cooler to cool them down and then they'll be ready for the freezer.
So I think I'm going to end the video here. It's getting a little chilly. It's getting late in the day. Sun's going down. I'm going to go get a sweatshirt on because I do have another hour of sunlight so I can keep working trimming up the strawberry plants with, on the row I started. I still have three more rows to do. Probably take me all weekend to get that done. So I will do future updates to show the progress of the plants and how they're all doing for us. So like always, please leave me questions, comments, and suggestions down below, and we'll see you guys next video.